Apparently, the Wilson Football Factory is there in all 108. Each team gets Wilson. 108 Super Bowl footballs. Is that is it everybody get a ball? I mean, that's Eric's two balls. I mean, like, that's a lot of balls. Right. Mm-hmm. So the Wilson it's... Football Factory in Ada, Ohio, will make 216 footballs for the Super Bowl, each of them handmade. Wow, I wonder what the lead time is on that. First of all, you got to back time how many cows you're going to need to kill um, and how long it takes to make a football. Because they probably send them uh, uninflated, right? They, they ship them flat, and then the NFL Inflates sends them. them when they get there. Yep, they yeah. send them to Tom Brady's house, and um, he just puts just this shy, if not enough, in there. Uh, no, I did not know that. I, I, uh, Ada, is that near Toledo? Ada, no, it's Ohio. Like, I feel like it's between Toledo and Dayton. Okay. It's like down in nowhere. I know where Ada, Michigan is. I'm not uh, hip to Ada, Ohio. It doesn't look like a very large area, but that's where Ohio Northern University is. So it's between, um, yeah, okay. North of Dayton. Yeah, okay. It's like due east of Lima. All right. You ever been to Lima, Ohio? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything going on there? People, can, I always hear people talking about Lima. You know, this company has a, has some radio stations there. Well, people we work with, they're like, oh, I was out in, in Lima talking to the the manager there or something. Of the, We have iHeart radio stations in Lima, but I've never been out there. Yeah, I've been out there, but I never heard anybody talk about it around here. Ever? Never. Never. Not around here. Not around, not not in wow. casual conversation. No? No. I mean that's is that where they grow the beans? Or is it named after the city Lima in Peru? And they decided to Americanize it. Actually the beans are grown in Green, Ohio? I lost, <laughs> I lost it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care where they're grown. I don't care. <laughs> All right. Well, in 1854, there was a cholera outbreak in Lima. Wow. How do you like that? Love in the time of cholera. Love in Lima. Hey, speaking of beans, there are a group of friends. I'm going to play a little bit of this for you. A group of friends. None of them are musicians. They're in Vienna, Austria. And they spent the last 25 years, they got together in 1998. Twelve friends, none of them musicians who were just looking to get their yayas out and show off their artistic tendencies. And so they created an orchestra where all of the instruments are vegetables. (laughs) You ever ever heard of Vienna's Vegetable Orchestra? No. I think most people associate Vienna with sausages. Uh, But this group has uh, spent 25 years turning beets into... Beets? Beets. Now, I was expecting this to be some amazing thing where I was like, wow, how do they do that? But no, it sounds exactly like they're playing on vegetables. And they've been doing it since the late 90s. So maybe they don't have much going on there in Vienna. It is a world-class city. I don't know what these people do. I don't know what their day gigs are. But. All right, what is- that woman's got a red bell pepper on the end of a hollowed out zucchini. Right. And she's got a, a a carrot cap on it. This is way less sexy than you'd think it would be, by the way. There's I know what you're thinking. one moment where I was like, I, I know, know what you're thinking. I sexy. Well, they're blowing into cucumbers, and I mean, is this the band that plays at the restaurant that Mary went to? <laughs> there was no band, but that would be it. It doesn't take much to get some people uh, in a froth. So. And then this guy's drumming on a bag of lentils with carrots. And uh... how mad would you be if someone's like, "Hey, I got a surprise. We're going to a concert." This woman's playing a a, a carrot that she's cut holes into. Hey, do you want to go see the Vienna Vegetable Orchestra? And they go, yeah. 
Uh, so for 25 years they've been, and they travel. That's now, what I'm I saying. Like, there's a chance that someone be like, I wanted to check this out. Oh, that would be terrible. In the 25 years they've been doing it, they've. I don't really want to eat my vegetables. I don't want to listen to them. <laughs> they've created 100 instruments. I mean, if you're using vegetables. You have to create all of your instruments. Yeah. They don't just grow yeah, that way. Your flute goes bad. They've... <laughs> they've created... What's the expiration <laughs> What's the expiration date on that oboe? Hey, my saxophone <laughs> rotted. They've created 100 instruments. They've released four albums. And they've performed more than 300 concerts around the world, including the Shanghai Art Center... The Royal Festival Hall in London, the Centre Pompidou in Paris, and they sold out an 1,800-seat auditorium in Moscow. Oh, my God. I, I, <laughs> that's insane. Uh, why they don't call themselves Motley Crudite, I have no idea, but they don't. They're the Vienna Vegetable Orchestra. VVO, if you will. So they said that they build fresh instruments before each performance. They use about 250 pounds of vegetables. Takes them a couple hours, and they have all kinds of tools. So their road cases are probably just refrigerated um, cases and then toolkits. Knives and drills. They have singers. That will sing along. It's not all instrumental. And so they say that when they're doing a gig, uh, they get to the venue around noon, and they inspect their crates of vegetables, and then they start making their instruments. Celery guitars, pepper horns. <laughs> How have I never heard of it? Has anybody Why heard of this? Why has anybody Why heard, of this? heard of this? Because yes. it's been around since 1998. I mean, I've been mean in the music adjacent to business for a long time. I've never heard of this. I always have my ear to the ground on really weird music. I've never heard of this. Every member plays 20 or more instruments per concert. And they said that they've all developed their specialties over time. Because you got to think there's a guy that's like, listen, I'm classically trained in okra, but I found myself on the pumpkin marimbas, and I knew that's that was the instrument for me. I was originally a leek flautist. No, what's annoying about And then about I this determined. Is these are probably really, really talented musicians that have learned to play real instruments and they're very good at them but the only way they can make money is doing this dumb thing god bless them for making money at it if they're making money i mean it seems like they're doing they're, they're doing they're putting, regular they're um, doing tours yeah why don't they come to severance hall i wonder what it costs to book them the cafeteria is not that big <laughs> <laughs> could we bring them to severance hall giant eagles produce department presents Sponsored by the West Side Market. There you go. Even better. Do they use local produce at every place? Uh, that's what it sounds like. Well, she said that they check their, it doesn't sound like they go out and buy them. I don't know. She said some people like building instruments based on classic instruments, like the carrot flute or the pumpkin drum. And this woman says, but some of us want to highlight weird sounds that you can make with vegetables. So this guy made a leek violin. And uh, he said, it's actually not easy to play. You oh, really? To... <laughs> <laughs> it's not? Stratohuvius? It's actually not easy to play. You have to lick it and tense it just right, is what he said. You've got to lick your leak violin. you got to lick it before you flick it. you got to. So anyway. The uh, Vegetable Orchestra doing um, 300 concerts over the past 25 years with their uh, produce soundscapes. Rustling onion skins. <laughs> ah. Well, anyway, 
Uh, I had never heard of it before. I have to tell you that I thought it was going to be more compelling than that. I thought they might have really figured something out. But, you know, listen, it's a hell of an icebreaker. Let's say you're at a party and they're like, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a performer. Oh, well, that can mean a lot of things. Well, I'm a musician. You know, you're dancing around it. You're trying to lure them into asking you the right question. And, of course, you've piqued their curiosity. So they say, oh, I, I notice you travel with a lot of carrots and eggplants. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a grocer of some kind? No, no, no. I'm a performer. Where you do see, you put them? <laughs> you see this carrot? Tomorrow night, I'll be blowing on it. Twill be a recorder. Twill be my new instruments. I need to find garlic grass for my bass strings. What are you guys? Can we stop talking about this? I don't care no. about any of these stupid <laughs> instruments. Leaks. What are you guys doing for the Super Bowl? <laughs> I'm uh, carving out timpani out of a giant pumpkin that I've grown in my backyard. I'm you. making raspberry clackers, and I'm uh, making uh, celery drumsticks. No, I uh, we're I guess we're going to a Super Bowl party. I was told. Oh. Some friends are having a, a small. I was told. Gwen said, "Hey, you think you'll get uninvited when you when you bring up the vegetable orchestra?" And everybody's like, "Oh God." Gwen brought the vegetable guy again. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing he's gonna say, the pizza rolls are too much sauce. That's right. <laughs> no, they're usually too dry, aren't they? Pizza rolls are usually too dry. I don't know. I, I like, like pizza a, rolls. I'm I like not them. averse to pizza rolls. I haven't had them in a hundred years, but anytime I have a random pizza roll, I'm like, man, these are good. I like a good crust. I don't want it to be soggy, so it has to be a nice, crusty pizza roll. <laughs> crusty, a crusty, crunchy, crunchy. not crusty. Crusty. <laughs> crusty. Crusty's not the You mean right. crunchy. Like you want cool. it to be crunchy, yeah. not crusty. So you want them baked in the oven, not put in the microwave. Because in the microwave, they get soggy. But yeah. sometimes I'm too impatient. I don't want to wait 20 It's worth the wait, though. Rolls. It really is. Yeah. It is. It makes a world of difference. The air fryer is a good good way to go with it. There you it go. It still takes like 20 minutes or 15. Yeah, you can't still, wait 15 minutes for delicious for pizza rolls. But air fryers rolls. also heat up faster. Like yeah. when you cook stuff in the oven, just a preheat in the oven takes... Two days. I was gonna say p- pizza air fryer is just like a tiny oven. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's pizza rolls are not a serious enough food for us to like wait for the oven. <laughs> like right. it's 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 like a snack food. Like I understand chicken breast and like d- different types of foods that's going with like yeah. But anything dinner. you're gonna eat, you don't want it to be soggy or floppy or I just over I overcook it in the microwave. Overcook it like till it's a little brown. Like I'm okay if the insides are a little crusty. I I need it. It's crusty. I don't know. What, uh, hey, crunchy. Hey. No, no, like crusty, like a pizza crust. You don't call it a pizza crunchy. It's a piece of crust. Right, but a pizza. We're talking about S-E-X in front of the C-H-I-L-D-R-E-N. Sex cauldron. I thought they closed that place down. Nobody talks about their pizza crust being crusty. I love a good crusty pizza. <laughs> a good crusty pizza. Mmm. I'm having some friends over, so I'm, I got to figure out what I'm going to make. Yeah, no, I guess it's a we're going to a small get, we'll together, get together for the Super Bowl. Yeah. I'm gonna I'll probably make some ribs. Oh maybe yeah. Maybe some buffalo chicken. Dip. Mary loves ribs. You should I talk to her. It. She just had some for lunch. I ate a bite. I'm not coming over. So You're not invited. You're not coming back here for the Super Bowl? I am not. <laughs> yeah, what will you do Super Bowl Sunday in New York? I mean, will nothing. you like nothing really? I don't plan on doing anything. I picked up a gig this Saturday in upstate New York, so we'll be driving back on Sunday. I know it's at night, but Okay. I, I mean, I don't. I've. I don't know. Maybe I'll go watch it. You going to the Catskills? Like I mean, we've got people upstate. Out. No, it's like a private fundraiser gig. Oh, okay. They had someone drop out last minute, so oh. I picked it up. But um, maybe if people are doing something, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, probably the nothing. boys, you know, out there. Yeah, probably yeah, nothing to be one hundred percent honest. But. I even just get yourself a little pizza, hang out at home, watch it. Oh. I don't have anything to watch it on. You don't have a TV. You have a laptop. I do, but. I don't have, like, cable. It's an app. I'm not going to pay for the NFL app or whatever. No, you don't have to pay for the NFL app. It's one of the billions of apps you already have. I think it's on yeah, Hulu, CBS. I think it's on CBS. Oh. So well, I don't have, like, I'll TV. Give you a, I'll give you a Paramount Plus login, and you can watch oh, it on go. that. Well, then there you go. That's what I'll do. 
And that will just cost you None dollars. admitting None that dollars. I'm the reason no. that you were uh, inspired. See, I'd rather just not watch this Nine. Oh, boy. Well, maybe you don't want to hear about vegetable instruments, but you might want to be uh, putting down on your calendar that Cleveland finally got the U.S. Air Guitar National Finals. Congratulations. Our friend Zach Ryan Durr was a finalist I know. at one point. The finals. That's, that's neat. When is it? Saturday, July 20th at the Beachland Ballroom. Hell yeah. For the first time ever, Cleveland, Ohio will host... The U.S. Air Guitar National Finals. One winner will be crowned the U.S. Air Guitar Champion and will move on to Finland to represent Team USA. Why Finland? I don't know. I, it's funny. They use an old quote from Keith Olbermann when he was on ESPN uh, where he says, This is the future of America. But he meant it sarcastically. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't mean it in a positive way. But um, there's a photo of Cleveland's own Ricky Stink Fingers performing at Nationals. So that's who, um, that's your legacy, Cleveland, whoever Ricky Stink Fingers is. He's uh, well known in the air guitar community. They have Eastern Regionals, Western Regionals. Brooklyn, Chicago, Nashville, and the National Finals. Cleveland, Ohio, on July the 20th. I would go to that. Just to dick around, see what they're doing. People watch it? Yeah, it would probably be interesting for about 15 minutes. And but you're like, you okay. like really good, though. Huh? Let's see, like, discover your yeah, favorite someone, air guitarist. Someone's really shredding up there. I mean, really shredding. <laughs> but how, how would you be bad at it? Is my question. That's what you'll find out very it. quickly. But if, if you, you go know to any it, of the regional ones. But if you know the song, like, yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm anyway, sure, I'm sure there's people that are real bad at it. It's a big get in uh, Cleveland to get the finals. So congratulations to everyone involved and um, Mazel Tov over there to the Beachland Ballroom. It's a fine, fine establishment. I'm going to break here. Got uh, Cavs pregame at 6.30. They're in D.C. They'll start up at 7 o'clock tonight playing the Wizards on MMS. It's the Ellen Clark Show. Everywhere on.